Hello, my name is Slight, and this is a Tau Solo Reincarnation 7 Over Explain, where I'm going to be taking you through a spicy build where I use Ice Blade and Swords Out to do a Swords Out um, uh, skill build. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff in this particular run, and we know that I like to talk a lot in these, so let's go ahead and get started. So first up here, we're going to go ahead and pick up Ice Blade. Easy peasy, and we're very happy to see laser gloves right at the start. No problem there. And here we can just see that the great thing about Ice Blade is it just starts off doing a huge amount of damage. To be 100% clear, let's just pop back. So, Ice Blade deals an additional 10% of the enemy's current HP as true damage, up to 5,000 true damage upon hitting the enemy with a flying sword. So, what does that mean? That means uh, it's on top of its damage, so it's not replacing the damage, which is obvious. It does true damage, so that damage is not uh, mitigated by any defensive sources. Um, and it's current HP, so as they take damage, that that damage from Ice Blade is going down. Okay, So uh, we it doesn't do max HP damage like Miasma does. And that's one of the reasons Miasma is so strong. So granted, does great damage, but not quite that much damage. So our first pick comes up here, and uh, we are given all these different swords out uh, synergies. And I think that I end up picking Epic Swordcraft here, but at this, I notice, I'm thinking about how this works, and about how Ice Blade's going to be doing the most damage. And I'm caught between two ideas, right? So the more swords that I summon, the more Ice Blade triggers I'll have, right? And that's actually really good, and, and maybe, maybe the right move here. Maybe Sword Shadow is the best pick. On this first pick. But also, as they take damage and they get lower HP, Ice Blade becomes less useful. So your swords actually have to be able to do damage. Otherwise, they're going to leave someone at low HP and then you're going to take forever to kill them once they're down there. So these are the things that's going through my mind when I'm trying out this first pick. I'm pretty sure I go Epic Swordcraft. And there's nothing too wrong with that. And we can hear my key click, so let's just turn down the volume. Um, nobody wants to hear that. So this is one of the toughest rooms in the game for me. I, I have This is a very tough room, and I don't think I play it very well either, so that's important to notice. But there's not a lot of good cover. Um, the enemies come in a really difficult to uh, maneuver around pattern, and those uh, explosion guys are really brutal there. And boom. Okay. All right. So we're starting off spicy, okay? I was in the zone, ready to play this build. I saw this room and was like, you know, there's a chance I die in this room. And then I charge at a heavy crossbowman when he's shooting, which is a terrible decision if you if there's any doubt about it. And oh, this is spicy here. Let's turn the volume up here. This is good. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, the salt is real. Love it. Okay, so I angrily revive. All right, so we are starting this R7 run with one life. Okay, we are like on stage two, and Slight has decided he's going he's gonna to play it out. All right, so let's just set the scene. That's the scene. All right. Now, obviously, the laser glove's doing good damage here. Um, the idea with laser glove is because it shoots so many different uh uh, instances or projectiles that charges our swords out really fast and because we're hitting the enemy a lot that causes the glowing bloom to trigger quite a bit. Um, I'm going to pause real quick just bring that up just because we're doing an over explain. Oh okay so I'm back here at the uh, wiki and so swords out is her primary ability it summons a bunch of swords shoots them in a straight line does damage all right they're gained every 15 ammo that is consumed consumed being the key word um, and so anything that increases your consumption is very good at charging this primary skill. And then Tau's Fatal Bloom does damage instantly where you're looking. And then um, for each amount of, so for every 12 times they're hit, it redeals the damage to them. So if you increase these uh, Fatal Bloom damage, then that redealt damage is also increased as well. Okay, so that just catches you up with the basics. Um, so here, obviously, we want to etch stuff. That's a good idea. Oh, and I realized I was supposed to switch my keyboard out to a, a quieter computer. I haven't done that yet. 
So there's going to be some keyboard clicks, and I apologize for that. So now we're given, I think, the best option here anyway would be Sword Shadow. But I had, by this time that I was deciding this, I had already sort of thought back on my original choice and recognized that Sword Shadow would have been the best, better choice. The more swords we're summoning, the better our damage is going to be. And as you can see, that is just mowing through people in R7. Those guys are pretty, I mean, those guys are not easy to kill with just one laser glove. Um, if I wasn't able to use my skills to that great of an effect. Um, so here we pick up a scroll. And it's important to, you know, let it go for a second. Leave it over here so that we don't stay in one spot against these R7 guys. Otherwise, we're dead. All right. We just keep doing our stuff. This weapon does great, and once, there's no harm, once you're, with Ice Blade especially, since it does so much damage, and since we've got a couple upgrades in it, to just spam it off cooldown. Um, and I think that's what I'm doing. You know, basically, I'm at this point, there's no unit in this room that can survive even the eight swords that I would be summoning right now, which I think is correct. It's three starting, I've upgraded it to four, and it's two stacks, so that's eight swords. Um, so there's no real need to, like, you know, get my stacks really high to shoot them all at once. Really, I just want to kill everything that I can as fast as I can. You know, and there I think that was three stacks, and that's that's plenty. I keep I think the uh, the beetle is behind me, and then I realize he's here. And we'll see. One of the greatest things about Ice Blade is its early game potential against bosses. I posted uh, on Reddit a uh, a fight with the golem from this run with this build, um, and it's pretty nutty, and you're seeing that right here. Notice, though, let's let's just pop back and watch that a little more closely. So watch how the damage is going to start decreasing. So right about here, we've met that cap. So now all this current damage is doing less damage, and what the brunt of the damage will be is no longer Ice Blade, but the actual Flying Sword damage itself. Um, and you can see how that happens. Uh, we're unlikely to get the killing blow with Ice Blade itself because of it doing that current damage. But here I have a tough choice in my opinion. I was really tempted. I, I've cut it out but, so you don't get to see it, but I was really debating getting Epic Swordcraft here. Um, but I think that Sword Guard is the pick. Um, we really just want to take those defensive things, especially when they're offered to us early, and uh, so it was important that I did that. Here we're going to pick up Sword Shadow. And then we go back for Ammo Belt. So just to, to put that into perspective a little bit, why you saw that going like that, the Elite Beetle dropped a orb. We got the orb from the chest. And then we came back to pick up Ammo Belt after clearing the room. We didn't. I knew what I got, and I knew it wasn't going to help me very much. And so I just leave it. The last thing I want to do is crowd around a single area for any given amount of time uh, uh, looking for this scroll, because that's a sure way to just die randomly. Cool thing about the... Uh, the swords is that they go through shields, right? Uh, go through shields. And we get a really early Sword Shadow 3. So now we're summoning three additional flying swords, which we've doubled the swords out, sword summon per stack. Um, so with six stacks, each stack summoning six swords, we're doing 36 swords, which all have, which we've amplified their damage already, but each of those constitutes 10% current HP damage. Um, maxed at 5,000, and so that's looking like a huge amount of damage. Even in the late game, that's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. Somebody out there gets that. I'm, I'm sure it's more than just one. All right, very happy to see these. You know, there's a reason that I make it through this run, and triple comeback is, is probably one of the best reasons. Let's talk here about this porcupine. I think I've talked about this already, but uh, Walter, X8, keyed me in on the, the the best, the current best inscription in the game, and it's this one right here. It's this 5% damage uh, for 6 seconds with triggering an elemental effect. And the reason is, is because this 5% damage right here, like, is coded really strangely, and, like, actually adds, like, damage to your base damage for some reason. So it's adding, like, static amounts of damage for each time you crit or, crit uh, you, you, you hit an, el uh, an elemental effect up to 100 additional base damage. So something like the Porcupine with this can actually get pretty crazy because all you have to do is trigger, um, what is that, 5, 20 elemental effects, and then each of these 15 projectiles gets plus 100 base damage. Pretty cool. Try it out. Um, uh, this He showed me a couple, he had a lightning blast that he used this with. 
Walter did, and he was just absolutely mowing through things. Super cool. Um, so now you know a little tech that'll probably get patched out by the time you're going to try it. So, better hurry. And so that's why I've got this here. So this is the clip from Reddit, but this is why I have this porcupine, because I'm trying to, like, test out the damage. And let's see if I can actually show you the damage. Am I going? I'm not. Uh, okay, so one, so I'm seeing, like, 36s. Ooh, some screen tearing. Sorry, that's just VLC media player not liking what I'm doing to it. I don't blame it, you know? So let's see if we can get... So that's all that kind of damage. Ah, uh, so, like, you can see my damage is creeping up a lot. 56, 60. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, but, you know, obviously, you know, I just did half of the golem's health with one swords out. Uh, so that's a lot of damage. And so you can tell that this is really strong, you know, and this guy ends up dying to my asthma here. Uh, like, <laughs> dead. Pretty cool. Um, so he dies to my asthma, but um, obviously that swords out is putting out a huge amount of damage. And we've kind of already come to the crux of how this build works. So let's try to keep moving quickly. Um, here we want to pick up empathy with the sword. Blade of Bloom doesn't really fit with what we're doing. Ammo extractor is pretty good, but I already have ammo belt, so I'm not really worried about ammo. But this works pretty well, Empathy with the Sword, and it actually works even better with uh, the Lightning Gloves, because the Lightning Glove hits an AoE, so everything being hit in the AoE has a chance to summon a sword. Super cool. Here we get Sword Mastery, because, uh, so I don't know if you saw that. Let's pop back. Sword Mastery says you can stack Blade Heart even when Sword's out on cooldown. That's exactly what we're looking for. Um, we want to be casting that as much as possible, and this is going to be able to let us do that. You know, we're really relying on Swords Out right now to do most of our damage. Especially because this Lightning uh, uh, Glove is not doing a huge amount of damage. We're basically just using it to, like, uh, set up more Swords. That's pretty much our goal here. And I would definitely be dead right now if I didn't pick up uh, Sword Guard. Keep watching my... Um, uh, shields here because it is ridiculous how much shield I'm getting and that shield is being halved right now by um, triple comeback Nice and a cool thing to know is that obviously the swords that get summoned by that uh, Empathy with the blade ascension are doing the ice blade damage as well. So empathy with the blade I don't know where that fits really in my tier list. I haven't come up with a I don't know Tao not well enough to, to, to say strongly one way or another what's best on her right now. Um, but the Empathy of the Sword seems best when you have Ice Blade. Because Ice Blade is really strong. Nice dodge. Oh, I said my name. I gotta edit that out now. Ugh. All right, we gotta upgrade this stuff. Great. Obviously, I think that it's worth keeping this uh, Thunderclap glove. Um, here, not the best options. I think I end up going here with Cursed Mark. Um, I am casting my Fatal Bloom with some consistency, and reducing their speed and their damage dealt is pretty good. I wish this was a stronger ability, but um, I'm just trying to spread out my utility. I'm not really interested in doing a lot of damage from Bloom, uh, so what can I use it for? I can use it to slow and reduce threat on enemies. We get speed and... Look at this scalpel. Okay, so we're getting multiple, which is very good on the scalpel because, and we have the projectiles increase as well, and when loading an empty magazine, re reload speed increases. All those things are popping off to me right now. That looks really strong. Um, this is something that I'm really, really interested in using. Um, it's going to be firing a huge amount. It's going to consume a huge amount of ammunition, and that's exactly what I want. My goal is to get it such that by the time I finish casting, by the time Swords Out comes off cooldown, it's fully stacked and ready to go again. And I just keep doing that. And then if I get something like Energy Blade, uh, Energy Storage, excuse me, then I'm looking really good. Because Energy Storage gives you a whole nother, um, uh, like, gives you another stack of your primary ability. So you'd have two stacks at the reduced cooldown. Woof. All right, onward. So, very strong. And it is what I pick here. And 
I go ahead and get that Gemini set up just in case I find something that I can Gemini it with uh, later. Hand something over. This is what we do with Spirit Feline when we get it. Uh, Spirit Feline is a really, really good scroll. And if you don't know at this channel, we recall that because it's too strong. All right, so I've sped this up. We're just going to kind of see where I'm at at this point in the game. As you can see, the damage isn't insane, but at the same time, it does scale quite well. So sure, we're kind of at like the max damage that this, uh, like our Swords Out is going to do. So really what we're looking for right now is to utilize Swords Out to be defensive with, with stuff like a Sword Guard and uh, to further the build that we already have going. This is doing true damage. We're not even close to doing that 5,000 damage cap. So even though we're not killing them super fast, we know that even stuff in the third stage is going to die about this quickly um, because we're doing like percentage health damage. So that's really good to keep in mind. That even though it's not like absolutely busted, it scales. So it's going to scale well into the third place. Look at this. This is good by me to switch targets to the most important targets. I need to get this resistive aggressive soldier um, dead uh, as, before he ever gets to me. Then once I kill him, I can focus on the band of retainers or whoever's close to me. Uh, but if I don't focus him, it could be really bad for me. Always kiting back. And it's, it's really important, um, uh, like, kiting means like you're, I don't know if you know this term, but like, it's like you're holding a kite, and the enemy is the kite, but you're holding it, and you're kind of moving back while the kite's coming towards you, right? That's what kiting is. You're, they're having to follow you, right, as you lead them. But kiting is not, you can't kite unless you're close by, like, I, I need to like be holding on to the string that's connected to the kite. And so I actually want to be up close to them so that as they come to me, they're, they're constantly at the same, excuse me, like at the same range as I kite them back, right? If I start way back and I'm just shooting while they come to me, that's not really kiting. You know, that's, that's like, um, you know, just having like maybe a positional advantage um, or just waiting for them or, or maybe even camping. But the problem with that is that I'm losing like uh, accuracy because I'm so far back. So the idea with kiting here is I want to be up close to them. And as they come to me, I scoot back. And now that I've taken out the big guy, I can focus on the annoying guys in the back. These uh, The snipers are so tough to kill. <clears throat> I really like the way that the those uh, enemies are like coded and like the role that they fill in the in the game. They're very annoying to deal with, and I like that. I think that means they're coded quite well. So one thing I'm noticing is that, yeah, sure, my current HP damage is good, but like the the once I've got the current HP damage from Icy Blade going on these things, uh, or on, on the enemies, that the follow-through damage from my blades is actually not super high. But we are getting good rotation through Swords Out, and that's that's great. That's what we want. Scary. Where did you come from? All right, and I think we can talk about this here for just a sec. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one of the cooler things about Ice Blade that you might not consider is like if an enemy has a health bar and an armor bar, because it's doing current HP damage, that means it's just affecting the health, right? So as I'm doing damage to this armor, we're actually not reducing the damage of Ice Blade. So Ice Blade tends to be slightly better against units with high armor, um, and uh, high uh, shield in specific situations. You can play with the math there and see that there's a point at which that would change, but like there's a sweet spot where you're actually doing better against armored targets than you otherwise would be because their HP isn't going down as you're doing damage to them. And so what's really great about this, and you can see, is that even though I have triple comeback, I am able to stay really healthy with all these blade summons. Really, really healthy. And that's one of the reasons that this build is succeeding as well as it is. And the empathy with the sword is doing okay. I mean, it's not amazing, but I think it's doing okay. All right, here we get uh, one of the other ways that our build gets a lot better, and that is Luminous Heart. Increasing the total stacks is, is very, very good. And because we have swords out, we can use this type of stuff defensively. See how I'm healing up the shield? Um, and that keeps me alive right there as I misplay this boulder room. Uh, I'm going too fast. Classic, classic slight. Um, 
The coolest thing about Sword Guard, in my opinion, is that not only does it increase your max uh, shield, but it heals your shield at the same time, and that makes it such a good defensive tool for uh, Tau. So much better than uh, most of the things. Uh, uh, so much, it just makes it really, really good. You know, that's what I'm trying to say. So we've got a really tough choice here. Arms Dealer, Lifesaver, or Devil's Covenant. Now, notice top right here, I've only got 250 gold, so I'm missing a component, an important component of the Devil's Covenant, which is that doubling of your gold that you have. Um, but even Lifesaver is super useful. Like, I, I know that I don't have that backup life. So I'm, this is a really tough choice for me, in my opinion. And I, I spend a really long time deciding. Um, and, and I end up deciding to go with what I think is going to be the most consistently useful moving forward, and that's Arms Dealer. Um, I'm going to be burning through ammo. I want that minus 20% damage taken, and I want that damage increase. Uh, and I, my assumption is that 30% damage dealt affects swords out as well. Um, and so it's going to be easy for me to consume 100 ammo uh, pretty consistently, especially within 10 seconds. So I should be able to keep this permanently up on myself uh, during fights. And so let's... So during this particular battle, let's try to watch our status bar down here and just notice how easy it is for me to keep up uh, the arms dealer stacks, my uh, shield and how high that stays, and... Um, that I am able to shoot, consume enough ammo to keep swords out going 100% uh, of the time. That's my goal at this point, and I've kind of built my build around all of that. Uh, it doesn't look like I was going to show you quite as much as I thought I was going right, to do right there. Um, but this is some good movement here. Uh, it's easy to die when these guys uh, trick you, so just popping... Uh, like, they can't really jump over like from here to here. Like that. So you can utilize these sort of jumps that you normally, like the enemies can't do to like, you know, outmaneuver them. Unfortunately, there wasn't a lot there. So I, earlier in the game, you saw me upgrade this uh, Thunderclap to plus five, which was spent a lot of money. I didn't touch on it. Um, but I did that intentionally because I knew the earlier that I get that, the easier it is to, to Gemini it later. And all I have to do is find a reroll once it's plus five, and I'm guaranteed to reroll that Gemini. And so I was planning way ahead of time to Gemini with this uh, Thunderclap. And like a Thunderclap with any magazine increase especially is really, really good uh, to do the uh, magazine capacities get added up in 25% rate of fire increase. And obviously, the faster we fire on Tau, the better it is. So here, uh, I think I pick up Warlike Blade. Warlike Blade is extremely good, even in this. Increases your accuracy, your rate of fire, and your ammo uh, recovery. It's just one of those things that kind of always works for Tau. And I remembered back in this other room uh, that there was a craftsman. So I go back to switch my Gemini and I it's totally worth doing this. And I get it on the last one. Gotta love that. Gotta love that. And now I've got a huge magazine on this two shot. And it's going to be so easy for me to maintain these two things. So now, let's take a look at how well I can cycle through my swords out, how well I can keep arms dealer up, and where I can keep my shield at during this fight. And it's up. Okay, so this is the second I can use it, and it's full. That's, a, that's exactly what we're looking for. That is the goal of this build. Boom. Perfect timing. Okay, and it wouldn't have worked out unless I had done some stuff before now to do that. Boom. All of our decisions sort of have come together at this point to allow us to sort of maximize not only our, our offense with the Swords Out build, but our defense as well. I mean, we're sporting 123 armor, even with it cut in half. Um, and, uh, you know, we've got a lot of great things going for us. Uh, so here we finally get to fight the Wind God. Um, and... Uh, I don't think that this is a. I don't think this is much trouble for us. I mean, because at this point we can cycle through everything so quickly, and we are doing five thousand true damage times thirty six. You know, that's that's. It's time. We're bringing out the calculator. Boom. Let's see it. Ready? Five thousand times thirty six. So each time we cast it, it's. That's just. That's just the ice blade damage is 180,000. So, I mean, that's, you know, 
that's not zero at all. And that's not including all the empathy with the swords, because we are shooting a huge amount of projectiles right now. And each of those have a 10% chance to summon another blade, uh, which does add up. And it's adding to our swords, and it's adding to our defenses too. Um, the main problem that I have with the empathy with the blade is that I wish that it, the percentage chance increased instead of like the skill damage for it. Skill damage increases are worthless. Like I feel like, and maybe I'm wrong, could be wrong obviously, but I feel like Empathy of the Sword is like only good at level 1 and only good if you have Ice Blade. But I'm not exactly sure of that yet, so don't, don't take my word for it yet. We kill him, alright? So now we see Empathy with the Sword, Luminous Heart, and Blade of Boon doesn't really work with what we're doing. And yeah, we can see this here. Let's let's pop back. Okay, yeah, so like now at level two, the chance doesn't increase, but uh, the, it's 50% skill damage. Worthless. Luminous Heart is great. And so now we've got a full extra stack to use. And look how tanky these guys are. Ooh, jeez. Brutal. Look how tanky they are. If I remember correctly, these guys get a... Ooh! Okay, so right there I get trapped. I actually can't move. Um, and uh, that's a brutal trap right there. Alright. Alright. I guess I had to show you that I died. Alright, this guy's immortal. So this is a good room. This kind of shows like kind of where I'm at as far as like what the build's capable of again. You'll notice that people are getting low and then I'm having to finish them off. So it's it's getting more and more important that I start landing my uh, shots uh, on my actual bullets. Um, because the damage from swords out normal blades are really not cutting through and actually dealing enough damage to finish uh, enemies. Another great thing about uh, Sword Guard that I mentioned earlier is the fact that it heals your shield. Um, let me pop back real quick. Yeah, so, so look at my shield here. If, if it was just adding max shield, it would be way worse. Look at this increased healing. And it's almost 100% uptime right now. I mean, in the sense that we are literally shooting consistently. Oh, I forgot. I forgot to mention, the, like, the biggest thing is that the, uh, what are we at? We're at 924. When you get uh, Sword Shadow, the one that increases the amount of projectiles that you're shooting, a hidden benefit to that particular ascension is that it makes swords out take longer. So things like sword defense, which would make you take less damage while you're casting sword um, uh, swords out, are like way better when you're doing this type of build, especially with sword shadow, because they extend the time that it actually takes swords out to, to play. Swords out isn't a set time. It, it shoots out swords at a constant rate until it has none left, okay? Uh, and, and maybe that's not exactly right, but I think that at least captures the essence of how it works. So the more that you're shooting, and the more stacks you have, the longer it lasts, and the better that sword defense is. I was looking for sword defense in this room, uh, sword defense in this uh, uh, game up to this point, and I hadn't found it yet. So here, uh, I live. I live! And we get, we get right back up to full shield, and it's because of sword guard. And I've only been offered it once this game. And if I hadn't taken it right there, I may not have got it, which is why it's so important to take it when it is offered. You know, you don't, like, you're likely to get more damage. But if you, or even if you miss all your damage, like, it's so important that you get the defense when you can. Okay, so this elite, if you've never fought an elite Kappa when it's not quick that you kill him, her, it, uh, it, them. It is uh, very scary. The damage that this, uh, guy can do is really really scary especially because it's a lot of elemental so right here I positioned very particularly because uh, all of the uh, Kappa shots won't hit me and so that was very intentional and that damage right there so when she it like reappears it does damage in the AoE uh, and it can be very scary the only reason that I'm doing very well right now is because of Sword Guard. Sword Guard is 100% keeping me alive. So powerful. I can just sort of man, manly, manly, manly tank it. And, and just to keep in mind, the reason Sword Guard's working out so well is because of what I've built up to this point, where I'm constantly casting my swords 
and I am always at full stacks of swords out right when I'm casting it. I made again, and it, right when it came off cooldown, you know, that is necessary for this build to work. Cool. Yeah, pretty good showing. So here, I my hope is I pick epic sword crap because I'm starting to realize that they're not dying quickly enough at the end of their life. Advanced dashers. Final judgment. Really good. Because we're doing, it's, oh, Final Judgment is actually literally perfect. Could not be better for this build, is Final Judgment. Because we have a good job, we do a great job of getting them low, but we have a hard time killing them. Final Judgment takes care of that. So good. Final Judgment was definitely the pick, undeniably, for that reason. Gotta be, you know, you have to prioritize exploding lanterns. You know, you really do. So here we pick up Giant Slayer for a similar reason when hitting the enemy with anything. So this means that the swords themselves can trigger a Giant Slayer. There's a 10% chance to deal 50% of the current HP as true damage with a max of 2,000 HP. That's doing what we're already doing. More current HP true damage. Giant Slayer is wonderful. And so we found some ways to actually significantly improve the viability of this build in these last two ascensions that we found with Giant Slayer and um, Final Judgment. Both of those have really improved our ability to play. Um, notice in this room how tough it is when you have the, the low ground disadvantage. I have such a hard time hitting anyone. Um, you know, obviously this fat guy um, is, and, and it's, it's part of the reason I die here. I'm being shot at from above, down, which is very easy. And there's all these little like things in the way, like, you know, like this post is in the way, this rock is in the way, like the even the hill here is sort of in the way of me able to like shoot at these people, and that's how I die. And you can see this guy right over here. Look at him. He's just ready. He's ready to murder me. There he is. There's the shot. Ugh. All right. So I am now down to one life, and that's all I have. But that's why we picked Triple Comeback, because it's uh, amazing. Super, super strong. So I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to find an edge to get in onto one of these guys where like the threat is low enough that I can get up here and finally I feel like I can get up here and I don't know why these enemies like pulled back there but if they had stayed on me it would have been really tough for me to make forward progress I probably would have moved backwards um, and here I don't want those things to spawn under me the exploding lanterns so I run and luckily my parkour skills are high and like notice how quickly we're like how like uh, easy things are dying now that we have final judgment because once we get them low they pop that wasn't happening before and uh, I have moving really quick <laughs> it's kind of hard to aim when you're moving that quick all right let's upgrade pump it pump it and it's really easy to die just keep that in mind really easy to die one thing I'd like to know is there's that talent that uh, all the damage that overflows from your shield to your health is reduced. I'm wondering if that has a trigger uh, cooldown, or if like if I'm just healing constantly like two shield, is that like constantly reducing the overflow damage by 85%? Not something I, I know. Um, I'm really trying to play smart here and not uh, be too overzealous. Um, and so I'm, you know, that's why you're seeing me play this way. I'm not going to pause here. I don't think. Right there, I'm obviously, I don't know if you know this, but you can kill those, you can shoot those blue flames that appear after you kill uh, one of those monks, um, and that will cause uh, none of the uh, exploding lanterns to spawn. So here, um, I'm not paying attention to my minimap, but if I was, look at that little sneaker right there. He's ready, okay? One of the great things about having my swords out take so long is that I'm healing shield this whole time for this extended duration. And so even though I'm taking like big chunks of damage, I'm also healing over time, which makes uh is which is a much more defensive or powerful defensive tool than you might realize. Um, in Blade of Bloom, like you summon all these swords that then stab in, well you kind of heal shields and waves too then. And they're not as consistent, which makes them not quite as good defensively. So here See these blue sheet, blue little flames? You can kill those. And if you do, then then no, none of these little guys spawn. These things are horrible. 
Evil. I gotta kill this guy. You've lived too long. Alright, and see right there? Like, my shield pops. Bam. Oh, no. Oh, here it comes. Right there. I get a shield pop. I mean, and I've got a lot of damage. I mean, a lot of defense. So, it's so easy to die. You gotta keep that in mind. Can't get cocky. No matter how good you're doing, you can't get cocky. And I have a real hard time with that. I really like to, like, feel it, you know, and just go. Like, go! How hard can I push this? Like, how close to the edge can I get to death and live? But uh, if you're trying to send runs, uh, especially spicy ones like this, you gotta stay. You gotta stay smart. Um, and so here we're just kind of seeing where I'm at at the late game here, and you can tell I'm playing pretty safe, right? Like, I think if I had another life, I'd probably be uh, a little bit more gung ho here. But I'm really trying to make sure I don't die. Uh, and I think I'm doing an okay job. The main thing is I don't want to get caught on something, and I don't want to do something stupid that puts me in a bad position. Nice. Alright. Last room. Let's send it. So, when you're fighting a boss that has a huge amount of HP, it's kind of nice because it means that your Ice Blade just tends to do around 5,000 true damage, which is uh, a lot of damage up until like the very very end where it does a little bit less damage but um uh i i like that like uh that that's the case it it, it tends it's not like amazing against bosses in the late game but it's not bad you know because we're doing that 5000 true damage i mean it's definitely not bad i especially on lower reincarnations i bet that this type of build is extremely powerful against like um the the uh, scary snakes and stuff like that but see here how I'm moving backwards? That's all me playing, like, safe. That's that's the goal, is just to play safe. I'm not... I, don't, I got nothing to prove. I want this to feel easy. I don't want to be on the verge of death. I want to live. And you can see how tanky these guys are. Super tanky. They're really surviving quite well. And now I've got to kill this lobster. One thing that I would have liked is the uh, ascension that causes... Uh, units to take 20% more damage. It doesn't work with the true damage, but um, uh, you know, uh, it's good. Sword Enthusiast is the pick here. Uh, this is extremely strong with our build, and I would have loved to see it earlier in the game, but we can watch our Sword Enthusiast stacks right here. Um, that's a lot of extra... I mean, that's... I mean, it's, it's a good amount of extra damage. Let's not oversell it. And, you know, I didn't know this, notice this as much before, but it seems like it's only the uh, illusions for the Elite Corrupt Monk that summon the beam, uh, which is cool. I didn't really notice that before. And here, nice, we get it against the flow, and now we don't have to reload at all. Um, bloody Ammo is... I have lost so many runs because of Bloody Ammo, and I don't realize what I'm doing. I don't pick up Bloody Ammo very often. But Heavy Shield sounds great. Perfect for the Scary Snake. And let's just get a sense of how much damage we're doing. Okay, so it looks to be about like, you know, 5% of his health with a with kind of a combo there. You know, the big thing is it's going to be really hard for them to kill me. Right here, I just cast my swords out as I take damage. And boom, I am looking really healthy. No problem. And boom, right back up to 8 again to do it again. So... You know, that's going to make it pretty tough for me to die on this on this boss. And that's only one level of sword guard. So, any more? So, this is important. Let's watch exactly how to dodge in this. This is a very overwhelming attack, especially the first time you see it. So, the idea is get in the middle of two red things, okay? I think they always appear just like this to your left and your right first, all right? Then they attack, okay? And then it's going to attack right at you. So, you just move over a little bit to the right, okay? Boom, and you're done. That's all you have to do. And final judgment, done. Well, that does it for my Tau build. Um, uh, Swords Out Tau build was super, super fun. Uh, my vision from it in the early game uh, 
really came together near the end, and some of the decisions I made early on really helped out as the as the game went on. Um, uh, it's not always the worst thing to play a game through. Even if you die early, sometimes, you know, it, it works out in your favor. And it's worth, you know, sticking it out and seeing if, if what you hoped would happen happens. Uh, it can be really harsh when you do die uh, because, you like, you're so tempted always when you die in, like, the first stage to just kill it. But for fun, if, you're, if your goal is to have fun, I do, I do suggest every once in a while just stick it out. Because the best runs are the ones where you're slated to lose, where you're where your hands tied behind your back, and it's not guaranteed. You know, you don't have spirit feline. You're not running my asthma. You don't know if you're going to win, and you don't know what to expect. You have to be ready for surprise. And uh, this was a great one, uh, super fun game. Hopefully, you can do something like this. Let me play it so you can look at all this stuff if you want to. Um, really, really fun. And I did get Elemental Curse, you'll see there, but I had uh, the Evil Banishing Tome as well. Um, yeah, so that's that for me. Hopefully that was enjoyable, and I will catch you in the next game. Uh, see ya!